Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of Bulldog.social CTF challenge. We've been able to run arbitrary commands on the server using a vulnerability in the second authentication method. And today it's all about getting a comfortable shell and attempting to get root. Let's get started. All the links of the episodes will be found in the description box at the end of the challenge. Also, if you haven't seen the first version of this challenge, make sure to do that. You'll find the links in the description. So there are many ways we can uh, try to exfiltrate data from remote server. We've explored many of those um, in previous challenges. Uh, but to make things quicker, we're going to attempt to get a reverse shell and Please let me know in the comments below the other ways you can do uh, in order to enumerate the host. The idea here is to discover the directories, files, um, if we can upload a SSH key, where we can upload it, etc. Because um, in a previous episode, we found that uh, port 82 was open, uh, meaning we can SSH into the box. So first of all, I'm just going to open a netcat listener on port 8888 locally. And I'm going to use ngrok in order to receive a callback from the internet. This is a neat way to expose local port on the internet without having to change your router port forwarding settings. Of course, you need to make sure you shut it down as soon as you finish um, and you don't host anything sensitive in your uh, port. In this case, we're just exposing a shell. I mean, a listener to receive a shell. So it should be fairly safe. All right, I have here a small snippet of code that generates my reverse shell payload. So I'm going to copy this and paste it right here. Now, what this will do is uh, give me a reverse shell back to my local netcat listener. And so if I send this and go back to my terminal, I should receive a prompt here. Yes, here it is, and I'm running as user node. Perfect. Let's go to slash home. I don't have auto completion. I can um, like upgrade this shell, but I don't really need it for now. What I just need is to figure out uh, what is the configuration for the SSH key. So I'm going to grep for authorized in etc ssh sshd login um sorry ssh underscore config and here we don't see anything uncommented um so it seems that the authorized key could be simply put in um, either of those two users um, because we are running as node i suspect that we can uh, create a directory right here. So make dir ssh. Yep, it worked. Um, let's go into that directory and we're going to echo our public key into the authorized keys file. Oh, okay. Let's paste it directly. So cat ssh idrsa dot pub and I'm going to put it here and redirect everything to authorized keys. I hope that I didn't mess it up. Just verify that my file is there and it, yes, contains my key. So now I could exit, but before I do that, I'm just going to verify if I can indeed um, SSH into my server, I mean, the CTF server. So it says that, hey, you already have used a private key for a similar host. I'm just going to remove that and run it again. And I am indeed running as a node on Bulldog2, host name. So now I can just exit from that. I don't need it anymore. And don't forget to close your ngrok. So with that said, what can we do in order to elevate our privileges? We're running as node. Do we have anything interesting in the 
files and folders here. Um, maybe there is something in bash history. Shred. Yeah, so they are removing bash history. So we don't have any history here. Do we have anything under bash rc? Nope. What else do we have? Uh, maybe something under profile? Nope. Um, I can automate this using a script. I've already covered this in a previous episode. Uh, I mean, a in a previous challenge. Uh, make sure to watch the previous videos in the penetration testing playlist. So if you go to playlists, there are about 100 videos just like these. You will learn a lot of things, so go ahead and give it a try. We will continue our enumeration and um, I want to explore more on my own. This is a great way to learn more things. Um, so what do we have? Can we like go to the other user admin? Yes. What do we have under user admin? Yeah, we have a Mongo RC. Yeah, this I have a DB shell here, which is only readable by the user. Bash RC is there, so we can read it. Set plus O history. Let's look for the running processes. We have a bunch of processes that run with different users. We have Mongo DB here. Let's uh, connect to the database and see if we can find anything interesting. So Mongo is the CLI to connect to MongoDB and it's a local instance. Before we can go directly, I'm going to go to var www. I guess it's hosted under node. Yeah, bulldog to reckoning. Um, I just want to see if uh, we have anything interesting like credentials to connect to the database. So if we catch the database, as you can see here, we have the host name, which is localhost on this port, and we have the secret. Um, if I run netstat and just uh, grab for listen, so we can see that MongoDB is running on localhost. It's not exposed. And this is the port number, which matches this one. So let's uh, connect to it, Mongo. And it automatically connects because uh, it's using the defaults. So we can do show databases. And as you can see, we have only the app database, which is uh, containing some data. This is the same database that the configuration file is using. So let's use that app. Um, let's uh, show the collections. So these are like tables compared to relational database systems, we have users. So what we can do here is say db.users. And here we have a bunch of uh, methods uh, like find one. This will return one document from uh, the, the collection. A document is a record. And as you can see here, we have one of these users. So we have the name, the email, the username, but we also have the password and the authentication level. So I'm interested to look in the database for any user that has authentication level, which is uh, master admin master password. So let's do that. Find and where we want the uh, auth level to be master admin password. And we don't get any because there is no user that has admin from the list of users in the bulldog.social website. So this is how we can interact with uh, Mongo. Um, we don't have anything interesting here, so I'm just going to exit. Um, let's find the SUID files. This might allow us to get root using a potential script from the list. Uh, but I don't see anything uh, here that stands out. We have here the usual uh, scripts that are generally not vulnerable, as far as I know. All right, I'm going to also find files that um, the user can write to. So I'm going to specify the file and I can use writable this will list all the users that 
all the files that uh, the current user, in this case node, can write to. Um, yeah, this. Oh, there's a big list here. Oh, I saw something. Let me see. Yeah, these are all the files under the node home directory. It's uh, obvious why we can edit them, but uh, up a little bit, I spot an entry, interesting entry. Do you see it? Yes, it's etc pass wd. Well, this uh, reminds me of the uh, King of the Hill challenge I played in one of the episodes. So if you go to playlist penetration testing and scroll down, you should see exciting King of the Hill hacking challenge, my story. Um, attempting the first King of the Hill on Try Hack Me. This is a great video. I highly encourage you to watch it. Uh, full of, um, you know, I tried to make it a little bit interesting. I had the opportunity to edit the past WD, but I didn't do it uh, for some reason. So this is a great opportunity to apply what I missed in the, that video. So I'm going to cat etc past WD. And as you can see, each entry corresponds to a user. For instance, we have the root, and this X here represents the placeholder for the password. So what this entry here is um, populated or uh, corresponds to the entry in uh, etc shadow, which we don't have access to as a user node. So if I do uh, etc shadow, as you can see here, it's owned by root and we don't have even read access to it. Uh, so since we already have access, write access to etc passwd, we can overwrite this value right here, and this way we can overwrite the root password. Let's do that. Um, so what we can do is use OpenSSL and um, use the command passwd-1, and I'm going to type in my uh, hash, uh, my password, and then retype it again. And I have this password hash right here. So what I can do is copy it and vi or nano for nano guys. And I'm going to change the content of that passwd file. So just hit X and then I to enter insert mode and paste in my hash. Uh, let's uh, save it. And then if I do su, I'm prompted with the root password, which I've just uh, changed. So if I type my password, I indeed gain root access. And if I type ID, as you can see, I am root. Perfect. If I go to slash um, no, slash root. As you can see here, I have the flag.txt. So cat the flag. Congratulations on completing this VM. Let me know your thought on Twitter. I'm definitely going to ping you for a chat underscore N. Uh, a great challenge. Thanks for making it. I hope you learned some techniques from this uh, series and that you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed creating it. If you did, then I then give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to see the other episodes and uh, I'll see you in the next episode with a new challenge. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell to get notified once the videos go live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.